Okay, and the audio is under fire for another tech babble. We're seeing what's going on. We have our lovable Marcel, also known as Pope the Bear, and of course, This I This. The video game is the world in which he plays. <gasps> Why not? Uh, Nintendo and Sony are in trouble. And if they both go under, that just leaves Microsoft. And that's a... That's a, a scary world. <gasps> so it's, uh, we'll pro uh, Microsoft will end up in another antitrust, which will split their company this time around. <laughs> if they're the only console. Well, what happens when you're the only competition? Well, technically you'd still have Sony. And Apple. And Google. Well, Apple's being put under antitrust, and so's Google. The well, world's a monopoly, and we're just playing it. Now, how many doubles do I get before I go directly to jail? <laughs> so we only have two monopolies, no three. <laughs> okay. Um, do any? What? Do I, have either one of you been keeping up with the UK Great Firewall? No. Uh, basically, um, UK tried to order all the UK ISPs to block Pirate Bay. The ISPs said, we're not doing it without a court order. So the UK went and got a court order and said effectively that the country must censor the internet. <laughs> no, not going to happen. Oh, no, it's already happened. So basically, the rule of the law in the United Kingdom is if the if any branch of the United Kingdom government decides it doesn't like something, it will get a court order, and the courts will grant it, and they will censor it. And you will not be able to get access to it through the standard uh, DNS system. Well, the UK once said that uh, you can put uh, cameras in anybody's house without their permission. That didn't turn out too well. Nonetheless. Yeah. But the UK doesn't have a constitution, so there's no, technically nothing above the law other than what Parliament can create. You know, they, they technically can really fabricate any law of the majority without, without having any real written contextual enforcement to it. Well, and what's, I mean, what's sad about this is it's going to do absolutely nothing and I do mean nothing to stop piracy on any measure of any kind. It will not stop a single act of piracy, but it has laid the groundwork for their government can decide what, what of the... Basically, it, it's made the UK like China. It's just the criteria are different. They will decide what websites the British people are allowed and not allowed to access. And that's just kind of sad. Well, I, I could also I could also argue that even if, even though we have a constitution here in the United States. Oh no, we're on the same damn slippery it, slope. It doesn't seem like it matters much. Although the good thing, the reason why I bring that up is that we do at least have a ruling party in, in a judicial system that it can be tested against. I mean, yeah, it could fail. We've, we, it, it, you know, it certainly we've, we've seen that process fail, but I think it's a little bit harder. But in the end, this I did. Yes, the internet could be completely and utterly control, under control of our of, of all the governments, and there's not a goddamn thing we can do about it. And, Except and, hack and around them, but then no, that makes us all short, outlaws. Short of making your own logistical wiring and hub switches, good luck. No, the, pretty much the hackers will destroy the internet. They're not going to give a rat's ass about what happens. Yeah, but that, that while that battle goes on, all that has to happen is basically sub gateways out, and then you have to wait, and then you have to rely on internal information from that, which could probably go on for a while. But I guarantee you, basically, the, end, the internet is dead because the hackers will kill it. Um, and it I don't think they're going to give a rat's ass the, 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 the hackers can do nothing to the logistics. You can do oh, other all right, things all right, just surrender it, just let everybody do. It. This like this, that's not the way technology works. If you were to reroute, I don't know how technology up. works, but I also know how crazy people work too, and they don't give a flying fuck. No. But they can take their rights away, take fight back. Okay, now that's or, different. But why? But why are you? Why? They see, I would kill the fucking internet. I wouldn't advocate that. I would advocate using they a don't political care. process. Well, they wouldn't give a shit. Once they I don't, they all their rights are gone. Fuck it. 
Well, if it came to that, in the end, they would lose. They don't care. The, 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 the only way you keep the United States Internet free is by using is by using the means of which we have, which is the, the political process. Now, trust and, me. And what, why would the hacker farm destroy the very thing that they use? I, I guess you could say that's scorched earth policy, but in the end, the scorched earth policy only would end up destroying that which which you want, and then the, the powers that be just set up their own support hubs and router services and all that. Go on about. better to torture home than live in a prison. I won't disagree, but right now, just like we did. Didn't, That's didn't, the way it is. No. Rusty, didn't we cover in two, two or three Today, shows? If people were arrested and everyone around my neighborhood, I'd literally burn my house to the ground. And be with it. <laughs> well, at least we know your exit strategy this. Yeah, we do know. But no, Rusty and I have covered three shows where we have actually seen the stopping of, of two major policies where where many people did advocate and and convey their their concerns and stop a lot of laws from from uh, coming through and shutting down. I know. Well, but see that, that you know we say that and you say we have a constitution here, but honestly, even with those laws stopped, uh, the same kind of crap is going on here. I mean, no, no, it's because you know, we have we have politicians that argue. What what I'm saying is why we. What I'm saying, the last factor, which in the, in the end I could I will agree may not change the result. What I'm saying is that. It's kind of like that. What was that airplane move? There's an airplane move where an airplane had no brakes, they had to land, and there was like all these little orange nets that kept going up to stop it. You know, if the more orange nets you have, the better, right? Versus just saying, well, I only have two. If it goes through two of them, then that's it. Complete. But if I got, I've got two more. I've got two more chances at least to stop it. And that's what I'm saying. At least what the Constitution provides, and, you know, it, it has to go before. Um, at least our judicial system, you know. So. Yeah. Representatives, the President of the United States, the Supreme Court Justice. I, I mean, it can be argued. I mean, that's why many. I, mean, at least I, I, I honestly, I would personally argue that having a constitution or not having a constitution doesn't make a damn bit of difference because it's just a worthless piece of paper. Ultimately, I'm what sorry. ultimately what makes the decision is what the people as a whole will stand for. If the people as a whole won't stand for it, and they're going to start going, hey, I need somebody's head on a platter. You know? I hardly disagree with that, because I think there's evidence, at least in the United States, that to the contrary. Now, in, in that's, other... Uh, that's on, like, last ditch, if your rights and everything is gone. Yeah, now, obviously, if the rule of law is over, which is the rule of law? Okay, well, in that scenario, of course, anything can, anything goes. I mean, you, under martial law or whatever. But empirically, we have shown, I, I think, pretty damn good restraint. Sometimes we get pissed off at, at the way things turn out versus others. But you know what? It goes through the process. And I find it very. I, I feel. I would feel personally. I don't want to turn this political show. I just. Maybe I'm biased. Being an American, fine. You can make fun of me for that. I, I like I like at least in principle, technically in principle, that states there is nothing above this written law. Whether that happens in execution or other things, man, remains to be seen. But to me, I have a little bit of comfort in that. Versus my rule of law is dictated by a majority parliament. And they're arguing. But do you know how many day, how many times a day in the United States of America the Constitution is spat on and used as ass paper? And then, and then, and then, if you follow up through the court of law, actually gets turned back. What about when it's the court that's doing it? That, that's, why that's why we move up the chain. In some See, cases, it goes out in the batshit crazy territory, like the French Revolution. Now, sometimes, and then, and then. And I mean, it, I think the way, look, nothing is foolproof. I just, maybe it's, look, I just, I don't want to turn this into a political conversation. When you brought up, when you brought that up, and the reason why I brought up the Constitution is because I have a few British friends, and, and we used to talk to uh, Phil, but they would always tell me of all the crazy laws that were allowed, like scanning for televisions and things like that, and, you know, they had no, they, they had, they, you know, they would explain to me their governance of law, and it's just like, to me, it's like, wow. For that to actually occur in this country, you have to go through 
quite a lot of hoops in order to... Yeah, no, they even had a police department to capture gays. So, I mean, that's all I'm saying. So, uh, forgive me for going on a segue or whatever. I don't really want to turn this into a political thing. When you met in the UK, just front it. So. Okay. Don't forget the uh, French Revolution. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's France. Well, they actually have a constitution. Yeah, they got their constitution because their civilians went out and killed all the rich people. <laughs> because that's what happens when you make your civilian treat your civilians feel a point that they're eating rats off the street. <laughs> and they didn't give a flying fuck anymore. Because all right, so it's they burned their government to the ground. Oh, I'm sure the same thing will happen here at some point. I just hope not in my lifetime. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, moving into technical what the fuck lands as we've touched are you, on. Where are, the, are we going to HTC? Uh, yeah. Oh. And I know what you're talking about. You're talking about that uh, HTC One thing and why internationally they get a faster processor. Yeah, they get a quad core abroad, and we in the states get a crappy dual core. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> But I heard that the trade-off is some sort of LTE thing, or I don't know. Is it, I mean, is that true, or is it because we're, we're doing the LTE chip or something with space? I, I don't know. There's a lot of claims. But, um... But as of the arresting, on the ARM level, and the way mobile software is written right now, I don't know what, much what Quadcore would be doing, unless you tell me that it's asymmetrical processing and, and, a, and you have private cores dedicated to certain tasks. I, I guess. But it's still one of those things that's like, really? I don't know. There's lots of things I, that I see that happen internationally and we just get nothing. And then I also hear the people that I live across the pond and say, man, you guys get this and we don't. Well, and it's finally the shoes on the other foot. It, it, the, the, the primary thing being claimed is that LTE thing and what you just brought up about the processing that you wouldn't necessarily see the improvement anyways right now. But it's still one of those you kind of got to go, huh, what? Just, what? Mm -hmm. You mean things going abroad that you don't, uh, that started in your country or whatever? Well, it... Uh, sadly, that's that's been the case more often than not. But uh, usually, the U.S. or North America and Europe got the better one. This time, the United States is the one getting the crappier one. Well, yeah. And that's one of those like, what? Uh, did America get that poor all of a sudden? I didn't know we couldn't afford the good stuff anymore. Wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> So, it's just one of those, huh? Uh, I'm trying to remember where HTC is based. Um, I can't remember. Taiwan. Taiwan. You're yeah. Taiwanese, right? Yeah. So, I guess it makes sense, but it's still one of those. I I think it has less to do with... I, I'm wondering if there was like some federal approval uphold on, on getting approval for the quad-core version, so they just said, fuck it. I, Nothing new to me. I've seen this before. Where we got a shitty deal and like the other countries got better. Of course, not with electronics. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think of a time in the last 30 years that it has happened with electronics to the United States. Well, uh, if you remember the old Transformers cartoon. Well, yeah, but that, seasons, that's a cartoon, but, not electronics. Yeah, but the, the last three seasons of the Transformers cartoon was never shown in the U.S. It was the... You know, they showed it in the U.S., but then all of a sudden they just aired it only in Japan. Told us to go F ourselves. So the closest analogy we have to the to screw the United States is a cartoon series. Come on, now, wait a minute. We're still on this HTC. This, I'm not going to consider that no. necessarily. It's you know, perhaps they just want to, you know, perhaps they, in, in, in like other countries, they just want to test it out or, or, or what, what have you, and maybe there's different... You know, the, the thing of it is, when we get press releases and things like that, and we only get part of the information, 
I always consider other variables. Perhaps there's other manufacturing logistics, and there, there's like maybe no. The uh, reality, no, no, yeah, yeah you're right. The ship. reality is we have no idea why this decision was made. Yeah. One of the logistical ones I could think of, because a little known fact is, for a product to be imported into the United States, it has to go through a basically an obstacle course of hoops for federal approval. Yeah, I mean, and I'm wondering if for some reason it was. They couldn't get the quad yeah. approved in the United yeah. States. And here's my thing, guys. We're going to get quad approval before you know it, and, and, and even when we do get it, we're still not going to be using it. That's but if you're it. abroad and outside of the United States, you already have it. <laughs> the only problem is the heat. I think they, if they want to go quad core, especially mobile, let's start thinking asymmetrical processing and start making private cores and private RAM for certain tasks within the phone. That makes sense. Especially if the RAM is user upgradable, just like a swap thing. Well, that's a different RAM I'm actually conveying, but no. But why couldn't you, you have a core totally dedicated to you know? You, you, you're um, telling me you couldn't. You, you're telling me you couldn't make the architecture with the sister chip. You could. Swap oh no, out. you wouldn't want. You wouldn't want that type of level cache. Okay, so you want that, that would be way too. In order for that to be expandable, the price would be outrageous for the type of speed latency that I'm talking about in RAM. You're, this is die-on memory, like L1. Yeah, and if you take if you if you make that outside of the chip where it's swappable, it, it becomes cost prohibitive. Oh my God! Right now, yeah, and uh, okay. and, ex and probably unstable. I'm not sure. I'm not even. Not, I'm not even sure about you know latency at that point. You're talking about being able to swap it and. Around. I don't know. So we it's need about a right so now. we need about a dozen or so dozen more cycles and more law for that to even be possible. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying L1 to get L1, which is like pretty much like you know static. What do they call that? What is what's the, what's the uh, is it, I forget the name. It's been forever since I've read a. Oh God, I want, I, my brain is saying static, but I don't. No, I'm saying no. But anyway, L1 type memory. No, man, you're you're at speeds that that's it's it's on the chip on the die there. That's where it is. <laughs> well, then the chip itself just needs to be swappable. <laughs> you know, just like every other yeah. damn chip. You know, I'm just gonna take it out and put, put my new one in. You could probably pull that off better, to be honest with you, uh, Rusty. You could actually probably say. All right, you have a bus system that is pluggable, which actually has been created before. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to upgrade your phone to dedicated, you know, this core goes to this GPU. If I plug it in, fine. Um, you, you, it would probably make more sense to put the chip and everything in this little card that you push in than just the memory itself. Uh, yeah. Well, and I mean that that's fine. We're moving to system on chip anyways, and I'd really rather just throw away this little like one inch thing than the whole freaking phone. You know, what's <laughs> especially since if you replace that gut piece of it, you basically have a new phone. Yeah. Uh, along with upgrading a couple other pieces, but yeah. So, all right, dare to dream that we start building stuff that way.